As I've already discussed in great deal on the channel before, Hanseg Island in what is now Romania was a truly fascinating place, filled to the brim with many unique animals known only from this region that gives insights into the European continent's time as a series of islands and archipelagos during the Cretaceous, and how said animals survived in these environments. One animal that was however absent from the earlier video was one so strange and fascinating that I stated to deserve their own video and it's about time to do so, that being on the enigmatic Balaua bone oak. The first fossils of these animals were found in Cretaceous Romania in what represented the European archipelago of the now dissipated Tethys Sea dating to around 70 million years ago. To gain some deeper understanding of Hatzeg Island, I would recommend watching my video covering said location before continuing on to gain some more context, but in brief, Hatzeg Island is commonly referred to as the Island of Dwarf Dinosaurs, on account of the extensive fossil evidence that said animals exhibited Island Syndrome, a collection of morphological and physiological differences, in this case, smaller size than their mainland relatives due to differing selection pressures. The first, scant remains belonging to them consisted of six elements of the front limbs, with them being discovered in 1997 by Dan Grigorescu. Although since the morphology of the arms was so unusual, scientists could not correctly ascertain their proportions and phylogeny, mistaking them for the remains of an oviraptorid. The first partial skeleton wouldn't be discovered until 2009, along the Siebes River in the Siebes Formation by Matthias Vermeer from the Red Floodplain mudstone of the area, and was thankfully far more complete. It consists of a variety of vertebrae, as well as much of the pectoral and pelvic girdles, as well as a large part of the limbs, although it lacks a head, which will be critical later on. Nevertheless, the finding was the first reasonably complete and well-preserved theropod from the region and time periods, and would continue to provide an enigma for paleontologists. The findings were described in 2010, and were given the intriguing name of Balawa Bondoke, with the genus name referring to a dragon of Romanian folklore, which were many-headed and sometimes equipped with wings, with the species name meaning stocky or squat, referring to the robust shape of the animal. From the recovered skeletal elements, Balawa was estimated as being around 1.8 to 2.1 metres in length, and was further notable in possessing many traits unique to it, and it alone. This has however provoked debates over their classification and what exactly these animals were. Initially, when they were first described, the first phylogenetic analysis based on the material placed them closest to the Asiatic mainland Dromaeosaurs like Velociraptor, which expectedly drew a large amount of press coverage at the time. However, the remains of Balawa indicated that they were quite different animals, with them being considerably more robust, with said morphology explained as being influenced by island endemism, having a number of peculiar traits that for many at the time indicated that they were capable predators, although not in the traditional sense. Strangely, Balawa possessed a reduced and presumably non-functional third finger, which consisted of only one rudimentary phalanx which also lacked a claw, with there also being extensive fusion between the hands and wrist bones, meaning they couldn't have effectively grasped prey. This is however where their legs come in, which are even more unusual, in that many of their leg and foot bones were fused together and were short and robust compared to other dromaeosaurs, indicating at the time that they were built for power rather than high speeds and gracile behaviours. They also, with their barrel-shaped torsos, had large hips with powerful leg muscles, with them being interpreted by researchers as being able to deliver forceful kicks, assisted by another unusual feature in that they were armed with two large, sickle-shaped claws on both of their feet, unlike the one of other related animals. These claws were on the second and on the first toes, which for the latter seemingly re-evolved to both support weights and to be used as ideal weapons to further assist in subduing prey. Said claws are usually and erroneously assumed to have been used as slashing weapons, although more modern analysis has produced scenarios that they were more suited to stabbing and that they would have been ideal in getting a grip onto similarly sized or large prey, compensating for the lack of one of their hand digits. From this point, they could have then used their two claws on both feet to better hold on to prey and pin them down while flapping with their wings to keep them stable, wearing them down in the process and potentially eating them alive. Said study also mentioned tongue in cheek, quote, it may have been herbivorous, digging out carrots with the two large, hyperextensive claws, end quote. Although said statement would funnily enough later come up again when further studies were undertaken. A later study in 2013, using a modified version of the same data used in the previous 2010 paper, found an unresolved close relationship with the Dromaeosaurids Deinonychus and Adasaurus, with some possible alternative trees suggesting they branched off before the common ancestor of Deinonychus and Velociraptor, while others maintain them as close relatives of the latter, with Adasaurus as their next closest relative. 
However, other pieces of anatomical data have since cast doubts on a dromaeosaurid classification for Beloa. In 2013 as well, a larger analysis containing a wide variety of salurosaurs found that Beloa was not a dromaeosaurid at all, but a basal avulin, more closely related to modern birds than to geholnithiforms, but more basal than omnivore ropteriggiforms, with another in 2014 finding them to be the sister taxa to Pygostylia, another from the same year using an expanded version of the original dataset that classified them as dromaeosaurids, also drew a similar conclusion. The most recent study to be conducted on the phylogeny occurs in 2015, which specifically attempted to clarify which theropods were close relatives of Beloa, while their analysis could not completely rule out the possibility that they were dromaeosaurids, they concluded that this result was less likely than the classification of them as a non pygostylian avulin based on several key and bird-like features, with many of their unique traits being quite normal when they are viewed under the lens of a basal member of avulae. Beloa seems to combine both apparently plesiomorphic and derived birds-like characters, with many of their unusual traits being explained quite simply when viewed as an avulin. To name some examples, the pelvic bones are fused alongside the shin, calf and upper ankle bones, having been fused into a tibiotarsus, and the lower ankle bones and the metatarsals into a tarsometatarsus. Their pelvis, as well as being fused, was also strangely broad, with the pubic bones bowing outwards for much of their length, and being strongly swept back, more closely resembling other avians than dromaeosaurs in this regard. Said dromaeosaurid ecology is also contradicted by other details, with their reduced third digits and the fingers overall not being that strongly curved, with the flexor tubercles, the bony lumps on the underside of the ongles, that anchor ligaments used in flexion also being comparatively weakly developed. Combined with the reduced, clawless third digits and the fused nature of the fingers and wrist, they clearly did not possess a typical raptorial hand that would be not expected in even the most derived members known. Their double sickle claws, which were first thought to indicate that they were even more terrifying predators than other dromaeosaurids, can also be explained, as it has been noted that the curved claws on the first and second toes are actually not especially curved, and compare more closely to a list of Mesozoic birds than to any dromaeosaur. They therefore look to be less weaponised and are also highly mobile as is typical in birds and not their initially supposed relatives, with said claws likely being more suited as a weight supporting adaptation, allowing for effective climbing and perching, with their possession of a large first digit indicating their distinctiveness from the start, as no other dromaeosaurs possess such a feature. Their swept back pubis may also indicate enlarged intestines for digesting vegetation, and all these combinations of features brings an interesting comparison to Therizinosaurids, which are known to be either generalists in the most basal members, or fully herbivorous in the more derived and recent animals. Interpreted as a bird from the most recent cladograms, it was found that they plotted close to animals like Sapionis and Chihalornis which are known to be omnivores and generalists, with the latter having a specimen preserved with, with over 50 fruits preserved in its stomach contents, meaning Beloa was likely similar in diets and behaviour. This fits in well with Beloa's established anatomy like their widened pubic bones and from further positioning were found to be the same approximate region of the cladogram of these other paravians, but outside of the clades, Pygostylia, which includes more derived birds. Said reclassification, while seeming to be quite a major change, is not actually much of a big deal, as stated by one of the authors of the 2015 cladogram paper, Darren Naish, as it is just moving the animals around two, three or four nodes on a cladogram, as other animals get moved much further on said cladograms with little attention due to them still being classed under the large umbrella that is the Dinosauria. Dromaeosaurids and the other members of the Paravian and Manoraptoran lineages were still closely related to and similar in life appearance to archaic birds, and it would be very hard to tell these animals apart from one another cladistically if they were all to be observed in life. Beloa therefore would be a secondarily flightless taxon, being the furthest of them all from crowned birds, of other secondarily flightless birds of the Mesozoic, supported by other anatomical features in addition to the ones mentioned earlier. However, this does not mean that the debate is completely resolved, as said evidence is liable to be modified or overturned as new data comes in, and there is still more to be discovered and identified for these animals. One thing that would go a long way would be the discovery of a skull, as both specimens lack said material, which would be key not only for identifying their diets through tooth shape and structure, but also for increased taxonomic insights, and so much is still to be potentially understood.
All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals, and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.